were a dozen Javanese Homo erectus the victims of a mass murder, 27,000 years ago at the hands of modern human headhunters? The evidence for this event is startling, yet highly compelling. Now, let's go on a skull hunt. The story of human evolution has become as complicated as a Tolstoy novel. It used to be a simple and lonely tale of one species living at one time, and evolving gradually into another species. But lately, this tale has become thick with new subplots and characters. The recent recognition of several different species of early humans living in Africa about two million years ago, and various forms of Australopithecus before that, has made it clear that there were far more lineages in the early history of the human family than previously believed. Now it seems that later chapters may also have to be rewritten, to include at least one more character, a relative who makes a surprise reappearance, long after it was presumed extinct. Between 1931 and 1933, a Dutch team found human cranial remains of 12 individuals in a sandstone deposit by the Solo River, in central Java, Indonesia. These fossils are known as Java Man, Solo Man, and one anthropologist called them tropical Neanderthals. Early on they were called Pithecanthropus erectus, before being promoted to Homo erectus. Hominid fossils from central Java are considered the most morphologically advanced representatives of Homo erectus. A hominid species assumed to be an ancestor of Homo sapiens, erectus was once thought to have vanished some 200,000 years ago. Testing a layer of sediment where the Java fossils were found, scientists discovered that Homo erectus may have lived as recently as 27,000 years ago. The laboratory results were so stunning that the first time they got them, scientists were sure they had made a mistake. But even though they used two different dating methods, scientists kept making the same startling find. The bones were 53,000 years old at most and possibly no more than 27,000 years, a stretch of time contemporaneous with modern humans. Now, the leading expert on ancient humans, Chris Stringer of the British Museum of Natural History, has said that a soon-to-be-published study confirms that Homo erectus overlapped with modern humans in Java. The data, with a probable date of 27,000 years before present, strongly suggests that Homo erectus coexisted with anatomically modern humans long after Homo erectus was supposed to have become extinct. Indeed, shock waves are reverberating through the halls of evolution, at the recent redating of the Java Homo erectus fossil skulls. These alleged evolutionary ancestors of modern humans were assumed to be very ancient, and these finds conflict with the concept of human evolution. Paleontologists don't pretend to know everything about how Homo erectus lived, but it's safe to assume the ancient pre-humans passed their days in unremarkable ways. Their language was probably little more than a system of gestures and grunts. Their diet, consisting of foraged fruits and crudely cooked meat, was not an easy one to force down, if the attachment points on their skulls for stout chewing muscles and their large front teeth suggest anything. Their skill in making tools was limited, a flaked stone or a crude axe was as advanced as they ever made. Homo erectus arose in Africa about 1.8 million years ago, and later ranged over an impressive expanse of land, that included the Middle East, China, Southeast Asia, and Europe. But Homo erectus was no match for our species, the Homo sapiens, and not long after anatomically modern humans appeared, the more primitive hominid died out. Or so it seemed. According to research published in the journal Science, Homo erectus may not have gone so quietly. On the Indonesian island of Java, it now appears, a small group of hangers-on may have lived as recently as 27,000 years ago, thriving in a world that Homo sapiens had long before claimed as our own. Early modern Homo sapiens are thought to have evolved about 200,000 years ago. It's known that it walked the earth at the same time as our big-headed cousins, the Neanderthals, who became extinct about 30,000 years ago. But only a few decades ago, it was commonly believed that humans evolved in a single clean line of descent, but then inconsistencies in the fossil records caused scientists to form two competing theories, the multi-regional theory and the out-of-Africa theory. The study, based on an analysis of fossil sites, has created a tempest in the paleontological community. Now researchers not only must explain how a single pre-human population could remain frozen in evolutionary amber, for so long after its species went extinct elsewhere in the world. 
but we also must revisit two of science's most hotly debated questions. These questions are, where on the habitable continents did modern humans first emerge, and how did they come to dominate the world? The early dates will stir up a lot of controversy, and some people definitely won't believe them. For fossil hunters studying evolution, Java has always been a good place to dig. Its equatorial climate makes it home to countless species. And periodic land bridges, during low sea levels, place it in the middle of the migratory route between Asia and Australia, making it the perfect spot to study how animals spread. Since the 1890s, numerous fossils of Homo erectus have been found on the island, but scientists have been particularly intrigued by more than the dozen partial skulls found in the 1930s. But why were 12 Homo erectus found in the same spot on the Solo River, and why did one of the original archaeologists believe they had been murdered by headhunters or cannibals? The skulls had unusually large brain cases, and were estimated to be anywhere from 100,000 to 400,000 years old, among the youngest Homo erectus remains ever found. For more than a generation, those estimates stood. Then scientists decided to find out just how old the fossils really were, using instruments that determine age by measuring radioactive decay in fossils that have absorbed uranium from the surrounding soil. Unfortunately, the university on Java, that is the custodian of the bones, refused to allow chips to be taken from them for dating. Instead, researchers traveled to central Java, and unearthed animal teeth in the same stratum from which the bones were believed to have been taken. The theory is that remains found in the same spot should have been buried at the same time, and should thus be the same age. When the scientists dated the teeth, they were stunned at the results, the remains were only 27,000 to 53,000 years old, suggesting that the hominid skulls were also that young. More troubling are the questions the study raises about human evolution in general. Saying they were stunned was an anthropological understatement of the century. Finding Homo erectus bones that come from an era when only Homo sapiens should have been around, is like finding a family of living Neanderthals in Europe. Not surprisingly, skeptics weighed in as soon as word of the discovery got out. But if the dates are correct, it's not hard to explain how the Indonesian Homo erectus held on for so long. Once Java's last land bridge disappeared, the island was separated from the Asian mainland by hundreds of miles. Any population that lived there would thus have been well protected from interlopers. Archaeological evidence indicates that Homo erectus included more meat in their diets than earlier hominids. Homo erectus was obviously a different kind of animal from its predecessors. Homo erectus was a mobile predator, very different from earlier human species. With the evolution of erectus, the body plan changed from a pot-bellied, ape-like form to an athletic, human-like form. These physically gifted creatures had the capacity to be far more active than earlier hominids. The best-selling novel, The Clan of the Cave Bear, vividly portrayed a prehistoric era when Homo sapiens and Neanderthals lived as hostile tribes, ambushing each other's camps and kidnapping each other's women. In reality, no one knows exactly how any of these species interrelated. Like the large-brained sapiens, Erector stood upright. He was likely taller and thicker, with a flat head and a projecting, simian face. However, some believe Homo erectus and Homo sapiens could never have lived side by side. According to the original archaeologists, Solo Man seemed to have developed a particular interest in human bones, and very probably practiced head hunting. The selection of human bones at the site is surely not the work of nature. The bones and skulls were brought to that place by man. But when you combine the dating, that this site overlaps with the arrival of modern humans, with the theory that these twelve skulls were victims of headhunters, then you come to the chilling conclusion that the last Homo erectus on Earth were killed by modern humans who kept their heads as trophies. The alternative theory that they were caught in a flash flood, and all twelve skulls wound up in the same location seems highly unlikely. Nonetheless, since their initial discovery, every aspect of the interpretation of these Java fossils has been controversial. Their identity mystified anthropologists from the start, over the years, individual skulls were variously identified as that of a tiger, an ape, a Neanderthal, and a modern human. But in recent years, most anthropologists who have seen them agree that the Java skulls belong to Homo erectus, making them the largest assemblage of this early human ever found. 
While it is true that the fossils were found before many modern excavation techniques were in place, the Dutch Geological Survey was in charge of the entire operation. The famed paleoanthropologist, von Koenigswald, was on hand many times, saw the fossils, excavated some of them, and described the cultural items found with the skulls. The history of the dating of the Java skulls is colorful. Since the original finds occurred well before the advent of radiometric dating, almost all of the dating was based upon the animal fossils found with the skulls. The most recent age ascribed to the fossils was about 150,000 to 100,000 years ago. These dating estimates were made in spite of the fact that all records regarding the association of the human fossils and the fauna were lost during World War II, and most of the 25,000 fossils from the original Dutch excavations have been lost. The thought that these erectus-like human fossils could possibly be only 100,000 years old made evolutionists uncomfortable. So some suggested that the fossils and the fauna were not the same age, the human fossils being much older. Since they questioned the age of the fauna in the original excavation, some of them used morphological dating, by computing regression estimates of brain size, based on time. The result, obtained for the Java erectus skulls, was between 463,000 and 790,000 years ago. Later, magnetic polarity determinations seemed to confirm a middle Pleistocene date, of between 350,000 and 700,000 years ago. Therefore, it was understandable why a date of 27,000 years ago for the Java erectus is a shock. But another fossil site upstream from the main site, thought possibly to be as old as 1.3 million years, also gave a new date of 27,000 years ago. But classifying the Java fossils has been as big a problem as dating them. When they were first discovered, von Koenigswald believed them to be tropical Neanderthals, and suggested that they were a primitive form of what he termed Neanderthaloids. He even used the scientific name Homo neanderthalensis soloensis. Still, others classified them as Homo sapiens soloensis, or as Homo erectus erectus, with still others declaring that they were not Homo erectus at all. Still others called them archaic Homo sapiens. But because of their obvious similarity to the other Javanese and Chinese Homo erectus fossils, most investigators today recognize them as Homo erectus. The Java fossils do, however, have a larger cranial capacity than does the average Homo erectus skull. For this reason, many researchers could not resist the temptation to consider the Java fossils as transitional between Homo erectus and modern humans. Unfortunately, since some researchers believe that modern humans arrived on the scene only 100,000 years ago, transitional fossils at 27,000 years ago will not fit into this scheme. The condition of the human skulls argues against their being washed in from far upstream. The skulls were all found lying base upward, without signs of wear or movement, and were in perfect condition, indicating they had not been moved. All of this shows that the fossils were found in their original, undisturbed location. Many early researchers agreed with the interpretation of the site by von Koenigswald. He believed that Java erectus were the victims of cannibalism. A vast number of different bones of all the animal types were unearthed, but of human remains only a very particular selection, whose incident was certainly not natural. According to von Koenigswald, all of the skulls had their faces smashed, and all but two had the bottom of the skulls broken open. Von Koenigswald called them skull trophies, and likened them to the practice of modern headhunters, who eat the brains to acquire the wisdom and skill of the defeated foe. While most researchers today believe the hominids were caught in a flash flood, von Koenigswald believed the skulls were placed there to mark the area by headhunters. Until recently, various tribes in New Guinea demarcate their dwelling or hunting grounds in a similar manner. They evidently suppose that the spirit dwelling in the skull can help them defend a particular area against invaders. Past attempts to deny the Java erectus coexistence with modern humans have been rather successful. Now, the evidence for such coexistence is strong. If the dates are right, we have the different species coexisting at the same time. Whether these Java erectus were the victims of headhunters, killed during a raid by Homo sapiens, or were caught in a flash flood, we may never know. This may have been the last group of Homo erectus on the planet, and their death is highly suspicious, given that modern humans were also wiping out the Neanderthals in Europe at this same date. 
there is a scientific principle that states, an evolutionary sequence is falsified, when a specific form in that sequence turns up, outside its proper evolutionary time frame. This is what the dating of Java Erectus has done, and that is the way paleoanthropology should work, 